A very good morning uh, to you all. O morena, to use te reo, um, the Māori language. Um, we survived, didn't we? We have got through Waitangi weekend. There was no revolution. Though reading your mainstream news media, you might think otherwise. You might think it was the most terrible, divisive weekend of the year. Can I tell you, yesterday, uh, I started the day in Auckland. It was a glorious sunny day. A lot of people seemed very happy in the streets there. I had lunch with my son, who I don't get to see as much as I like because I, uh, he lives up there. I live down here in Wellington. And I had a good day. Earlier in the weekend, I attended a social, well, semi-formal social function at the home of Shane John Jones, an annual event which attracts uh, po people from across the political spectrum and uh, diplomats and many other people in New Zealand. Uh, though I decided not to go to the formal um, events at Waitangi, uh, and I do want to go, and I'd said last year I, I want to go there, because I guess I felt that the rest of New Zealand was doing other things, and maybe I should too. I note that this year's Waitangi Day celebrations have been perhaps the most political I have ever seen. And the decision to uh, welcome parliamentarians not en masse and not all together on to um, Waitangi, but party by party, I think <laughs> heightened the politicisation of what should be our national day. And clearly the responses to various parties were tailor-made by activists and others to achieve political ends. I think that's a great pity. I also note that Wellington's Mayor Tori Whanau made it a political day at Waitangi Park in Wellington. She said she was the Māori Mayor of Wellington. It has always struck me that actually Waitangi Day is about all of us uh, together. And it is an unwelcome development that the day has been politicised and that politicisation has been encouraged by a mainstream media who have spent much of the last few days telling lies to the people of New Zealand about a government that supposedly wants to rewrite the treaty, which no one, no one is proposing uh, whatsoever. Um, so, but equally, I tried to stay away. I haven't watched a six o'clock news bulletin all weekend. Why? Because I know what they're going to say. Um, I know the mis and disinformation they're going to spread. And I know that the vast majority of New Zealanders had, uh, um, were either working, because they had to, or were at the beach or at a barbie or with friends and family, and the weather was pretty good. And that is perhaps the most we can hope for. Uh, Winston Peters in particular got a, a hard time, I suppose, and he gave as good as he got on the Marae. And New Zealand first, quite a lot of focus on them. In particular, um, Shane Jones. And I wanted to begin this morning by talking to Shane because he was the person uh, who opened his home to so many people on Sunday night in an act of absolute Kiwi hospitality. Uh, and also because um, his party, the New Zealand First Party, got, you know, a fair few brickbats thrown at it um, and encouraged to be thrown at it by our mainstream media over the weekend. So Shane Jones joins us uh, by phone now. Um, Minister, good morning to you and thank you for your hospitality on Sunday night. Sean, thanks for having me on the uh, show and uh, I want people to know my 85 year old mother also turned out at the do to keep an eye on her son because uh, so much of what's happened about Waitangi has uh, moved to symbolic political posturing and it's moved away from the influences that kind of shape the lives and the priorities and the attitudes of politicians. So offering hospitality is not for the faint hearted, but it's part of how I was brought up along with my wife, Dot. Yeah. Um, well, it was a good do, but uh, I did reflect this change in protocol to have parties come on separately really did allow this to become far more than a commemorative event or a celebration. It was essentially a political event at Waitangi itself. Okay, can I be really explicit for our listeners? Yeah. Historically, about 40 years ago, the Governor-General and other dignitaries were welcomed on the top marae. 
Yeah. Then matters changed, and then it um, went down to the bottom of my, and there was a frenetic, loud, uh, polarizing period of activity when Bill, uh, Jim Bolger, in the early to mid nineties, took around the fiscal envelope concept, right. i.e., ensuring that the cost of settlements did explode beyond certain fiscal parameters. The Māori Party last year clearly demonstrated they did not want to be regarded as part of the orthodox parliamentary elected community. They wanted to step aside. And we ended up going back to the um, old system. But what really changed this year, and it's an innovation that I had my doubts about, which was the creation of a political dialogue after the formal Māori welcome. Mm. And once that dialogue in that sun with uh, not just the protesters, but a whole host of other people who are not au fait, who are not comfortable with how we run debates in Parliament. And that's where things, in my view, uh, went off track. Now, you can blame the politicians and the very sharp um, and arguably um, unwanted policies from some in Māori Dim that we took to the electorate. But we've got our mandate. We derive our legitimacy, which may run out in three years. Lord only knows, but we're going to ensure that we get put our best foot forward so that we sustain our support amongst the voters. And the people that were there, they don't need to like us personally, but they should respect the fact that the ideas we took to the electorate, we put it all on the line, seeking permission from them to take these ideas to the highest court in the land. That's called Parliament. Shane, do you feel that New Zealand First and other politicians were treated with respect at Waitangi this year? Uh, I think during the ritual and the uh, pōhiri, and for the vast majority of um, Kiwis there, even the strange people that turned up with Tamiiti, who was an old friend, um, they, they sort of turned up dressed in white with this loud whirring sound and strange objects they were flinging around. It was, uh, it was it was quite uh, it was quite odd. It was very unusual. I've never seen anything like it. Sort of like a scene out of the movie June. However, um, the I think where things got uh, heated, and hey, it's 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 political debate. We get heated in Parliament, but the Speaker at least uh, orders us out of the House. I think what it lacked was uh, someone with a great deal of authority, or more importantly, uh, boldness to settle down the crowd and say, look, you wanted to hear from Mr. Seymour, you want to hear from Winston, you are not going to deter these men from their course of action simply by uh, yelling and screaming and, and hollering. If anything, Seymour's still a very young man. He's going to be around, uh, subject to electoral providence, for a long, long time. And indeed, New Zealand First is going to be around for a long, long time. And I think the organisers have learned a valuable lesson. Don't structure those events unless you can control them. All right, and you believe it was at times out of control? Yeah, they, it lacked enough authority and um, it, it fell to a lady from Ngāti Hine, a hapu of the Ngāpuhi tribe, to stand up and say to, the, uh, to those that were hollering, don't invite people to come and uh, talk to you without listening. Other than that, what's the point of them coming? And be careful what you wish for, because there's a scores of other places where the Treaty of Waitangi was signed. Yeah. And most of those other places just want to celebrate the day, whether it's with surfing, eating, dancing, singing, or indeed the real spirit I felt of Waitangi Day was captured by the hundreds of young men and women on the waka, just out on the water celebrating their culture, providing a spectacle for visitors who aren't familiar with um, how important waka are to the traditions of Waitangi, the traditions of the Māori origins, and indeed the early contact period between the, uh, the various um, sailing ships and the Māoris and their wakas. Yeah. Hey, a couple of other issues I want to cover. Pena Henare gave a speech and when he talked about raising up his gun. Is this a uh, rhetorical... Uh, or, or form of oratory that is generally accepted in Maori and shouldn't be taken literally, or were you surprised at that imagery? Oh, look, uh, Pen, uh, uh, Penny is the grandson of the famous James Henare, commander of the Maori Battalion. But I want all your listeners to know, Penny is a, he, he's a lover, he's not a fighter. And it was um, his attempt to deploy a rhetorical device saying that 
his tongue, his rhetoric, would be the, um, uh, the way in which he... Yeah, the, he, he that, that'll be his weapon of choice. It's got nothing to do with um, grabbing an AK-47 or a shotgun or something like yeah. that. It's just... Uh, it's, it's, it's the... Uh, Highly <laughs> colourful rhetoric that often comes through Malay speaking. All right, so we shouldn't lose our lunch. <laughs>